in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 through 22, and verse 57 reads, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Here it is, verse 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at your neighbor square in the face and tell him, rejoice, because the devil is defeated. Y'all might have to come get this mic for me today. Look at the neighbor on your other side and say, neighbor, I need you to rejoice with me on today. I ask them, why? Why should I rejoice with you? Why? Why should I rejoice? Tell them, rejoice because the devil is defeated. If you know that to be true, put your hands together and give God praise in this place. <laughs> yeah. You may be seated. In the presence of the Lord, God bless us on today. Bless us on today. Um, collectively referred to as his passion, the redemptive suffering and ultimate death of Jesus Christ by crucifixion represents a critical aspect of the doctrine of salvation in Christian theology. Of certainty, salvation is the saving grace of God that delivers us from the debacle of sin and reunites us to God, restoring us back to our original status as his image, offspring, and likeness. God is a holy God. God is a just God. God is a righteous God. God is a faithful God. God is a perfect God who has never been stained with the soil of sin. Therefore, when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden by way of disobedience, a detrimental divide was created as a result of their sin, and it separated them from a sinless God. As a result of the sin of the first man, salvation becomes paramount for every man who desires to be reconnected to God in that salvation removes the sin barrier between God and man. Romans 6 and 23 reads, for the wages of sin, help me somebody, is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This gift of God is identified as the gift of salvation. According to, according to Romans 8, 1 and 2, salvation acquits us from the condemnation of sin. Uh, salvation delivers us from the ruin, shame, and ubiquitous guilt of sin. Acts 4 and 12 explains that salvation is exclusively found through Jesus Christ. The apostle Peter writes, and there is salvation through no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. As Christians, we regard Jesus Christ as the anointed Messiah. I feel your help, your Holy Ghost. The one who is empowered by God to set us free. We understand his death as necessary for the forgiveness of sin. A biblical truth known as atonement, which is, which is the reunion of God and man through sacrifice. I want you to know today that if you want to be connected or enhance your, connect your connection to God, make a sacrifice. Look at your neighbor and say, I want to tell you today, neighbor, if you want to be connected 
or enhance your connection to God, I dare you to make a sacrifice. Uh, now Webster, Webster, Webster defines sacrifice uh, as, as uh, the act in which one uh, is destined to lose. Webster's dictionary has given the word sacrifice a bad rap in that it has attached a negative connotation to the word society has led us to believe that to sacrifice is to lose it has led us to believe that sacrifice is for suckers but the biblical translation of the word sacrifice is synonymous with investment which means to give up something of value today with the expectation of creating and receiving something more valuable tomorrow you must understand that sacrifice is the seed that opens the door to the supernatural look at your neighbor say neighbor can I tell you on today Sacrifice is the seed that opens the door to the supernatural. Oh, if you don't believe me, ask the woman, the woman, the widow woman of Zarephath. The Bible says that, that God sends God sends the prophet Elijah to a barren place, a place that was in a season of famine. He says, I have prepared a widow woman and she's going to minister to you. Uh, Elijah sees this widow woman drawing, well, uh, drawing water from the well and, and he says to her, could you fetch me some water? And, and as she leaves, he says, not only fetch me some water, but, but make me a cake. Uh, she says, oh, prophet, I got to stop you right there. Uh, I only have a little bit of oil and meal left, and I'm going to eat that cake that I'm going to bake, and me and my son, we're going to die. The prophet says, I hear what you're saying, mother. I appreciate what you're saying, but, but if you would obey the words that I speak to you, God will do something miraculous in your life. This woman heeds the word of the prophet, and she makes the prophet a cake. And the Bible says from that time on, every time she went back to her, her vessels uh, for oil and meal, uh, there was supply to meet her need. She submitted to the sacrificial words of the prophet, and, it, and she created a residual flow for her home. If you don't believe the, the testimony of the widow woman, what about the captain of the Syrian army named Naaman? Uh, the prophet Elisha. Elisha uh, tells him, if you want to be healed from leprosy, go and dip seven times in the Jordan River. And this, this, this man had to sacrifice his pride. He, he didn't want to go and do something that he felt was beneath him. But sometimes you have to sacrifice a seed of pride in order, oh God help me, in order to unlock the supernatural in your life. Tell somebody, get over yourself. Uh, tell somebody, if you move out of your own way, God will bless your life. Uh, if you don't believe the word of woman of Zarephath, if you don't believe uh, the captain named Naaman, what about, what about the young lad who had two fish and five loaves of bread? He gave up what he had, and as a result of his sacrifice, uh, he, he made the contribution that created the world's greatest fish fry. Uh, tell someone, don't be afraid to give up what's in your hand. Because when you sow what's in your hand into sovereign soil, God will produce a supernatural harvest. You don't believe Naaman? Okay. You don't believe Zer the woman of Zarephath? You don't believe the young lad? Well, do you believe God himself? Because, because one day God, our Heavenly Father, sacrificed the seed of his son into the world. And, and the return on his investment yielded a soul harvest that includes you and I. Look at your neighbor say, I am the harvest of the investment made by God. You must understand every time, I feel like preaching up in this place on the day, every time you make a sacrifice unto God, God makes an investment into you. Say with me, every time I make a sacrifice unto God, God makes an investment 
into me that's why the devil is so nervous on this morning he he's about to have a nervous breakdown because he knows that you've positioned yourself to receive a supernatural breakthrough on today because for many of you just getting here was a sacrifice yeah you came through the door smiling but you had an argument with your spouse on the way to church it, it was a sacrifice for you to get here somebody almost stayed home then then you thought to yourself if I can get to the house of God and sow a seed of sacrifice into sovereign soil I believe that God will do something supernatural in my life nudge your neighbor and say neighbor I'm not just here today because it's it, because it's Easter morning I'm here today with a spirit of expectation I'm expecting God to do something that's going to blow my mind I'm, I'm expecting God to do something that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and that it has not even entered into the hearts of men those good things that God's going to do for me nudge your neighbor say get ready oh tell them take off take off your shoes oh tell them tie down your weave and tie down your wig tell them something's getting ready to jump off up in here in the spirit it's resurrection Sunday and I know that because he got up I can too look at your neighbor say neighbor rejoice because the devil is defeated. I'm talking about the power of sacrifice. And every time you make a sacrifice, you must understand that you get closer to God. And the closer you get to God, the better your life will be. Can I preach like I feel it? The closer you get to God, the more the devil has to back up from you. The Bible says in James 4 and 7 that if we would submit to God and resist the devil, the devil has to flee from us. When you get close to God, you are haters can't handle you. At least you, when you get close to God, peace won't abandon you. Isaiah said, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Every now and then, every now and then you have to make a sacrifice to show the devil that you are willing to endure temporary fleshly discomfort in order to maintain permanent spiritual proximity. A priest, Dr. Jones, I'm doing the best I can. So Sometimes you've got to say no to the things of the flesh today in order to release the blessings of the spirit tomorrow. You must understand that denial of immediate fleshly desire will lead to long-term spiritual reward. Look at your neighbor say, if you can deny your flesh today, God will bless you tomorrow. Single sister, if you can say no to him on today, he'll ask you to marry him on tomorrow you must understand that every now and then people don't understand and appreciate the power of sacrifice I can give my own testimony I remember when my family members would always talk about me they called me antisocial they called me a career student and I said no I am a career learner the difference between a career student and a career learner is that a career student never graduates I am a career learner because I grad I finish what I start. They talked about me, Gary, when I decided to stay home and practice my horn, or when I decided to stay home and read my words. They called me antisocial. While they were out partying and having a good time going to the movies, I was studying to show myself a proof. They laughed at me then, but they ain't laughing now because I've qualified myself to be used by God. And you must understand that your gift will make room for you but when you enhance your gift with preparation when preparation meets opportunity success is inevitable priest pastor I believe I will look at your neighbor say you must understand the power of sacrifice and those who laugh at you today you will lead them tomorrow oh lord have mercy let your neighbor say they're laughing now but they're not going to be laughing in just a little while because God is going to raise me to a place of prominence. Ooh, I feel like preaching up in this place on today. So denial of immediate fleshly desire will lead to long-term spiritual reward. 
Jesus endured the temporary agony of the cross on earth in order to create an internal glory in heaven. I don't mind being temporarily uncomfortable today because I'm creating an eternal blessing for my tomorrow. Tell somebody, tell them, say, say, neighbor, I don't mind being temporarily uncomfortable because I'm creating an eternal blessing for my tomorrow. Somebody says sacrifice. Now, Jesus shows us the power of sacrifice. We enjoy purpose, peace, and prosperity on today because of the sacrifice he made over 2,000 years ago. Oh, uh, uh, no, no, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, every preacher who's a preacher uh, can't wait to preach on Resurrection Sunday. So, so you got to indulge me, if you would, as, as I do the electric slide through scripture, um, highlighting the course of world-altering events uh, that changed the itinerary of human history, giving you and me an opportunity to live and lead an abundant life. Somebody said, preach, pastor. Uh, someone said, with me, rejoice, because the devil is defeated. No.